Greetings my dears in love and light. DNA activation. What's it all about and can you activate your DNA? Here's a definition of DNA for you. Deoxyribonucleic acid is a molecule that carries the genetic instructions used in the growth, development, functioning and reproduction of all known living organisms and many viruses. And when talking about strands of DNA, our DNA is two-stranded. And as you can see here, it's the long proteins that hold the DNA together. And what spiritual people often say is that more strands of DNA are going to be activated so that we can ascend. So that includes more and more strands, up to 12 strands of DNA. So DNA carries the instructions to make a human or an animal or whatever living thing it is, a plant or whatever. Now we learn about DNA at school, so many of us know already pretty much what it is. And just really quickly, you may have also heard the term gene, and this is a definition of a gene for you. A gene is the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. Genes, which are made up of DNA, act as instructions to make molecules called proteins. The Human Genome Project has estimated that humans have between 20,000 and 25,000 genes. Every person has two copies of each gene, one inherited from each parent. Most genes are the same in all people, but a small number of genes, that's less than 1% of the total, are slightly different between people. So that definition of genes tells us that our DNA is all very similar between us and then just less than 1% causes our differences between us. But I'll get back to that later. Now those are physical definitions of DNA and genes. Let's stick to DNA right now. So what about from a spiritual perspective? So that physical definition of DNA talks about genetic instructions. But instructions is the key here. Now we live in an energetic reality. Now I've described this in other videos as well, but it's so key in many of the videos I make. So just bear with me for one moment while I just quickly say that we live in an energetic reality as we know from quantum physics, quantum mechanics, that everything is made up of energy and atoms are made up of particles of energy and consciousness has a bearing on our reality that we create if you look up the double slit experiments as an example. So we live in a kind of matrix of sorts with our minds plugged into this energetic reality, a unified field, energy that we live within and we are all individual, we're all co-creators within this energetic reality interacting with it and co-creating together. Now within this energetic reality we have our own little code going on. Our pinpoint of consciousness, which is me and you and our friends and our family, each one of us individuals, each of us has our own code, our own blueprint. Our DNA is our program running. And I'm quite fond of describing reality in terms of a program because deep in the formulas for string theory, for example, they found computer code. It does look like our reality resembles computer code, very sophisticated code, of course, and it's decoded in our minds and we interact with it, interact with this code, and our consciousness is part of this code. And as I always say, it doesn't make your reality any less important, any less viable, it's your experience. So as quantum physicists will tell you, if you go down to the extremely, extremely small level, you find atoms. And it's the same with the human body. If you go down to the very small level, you find DNA, and there's DNA in each of the cells of our body. That blueprint is, is mirrored in every single cell in our body. And that DNA itself is made up of atoms. It's made up of energy too, just like your body is. And it's the same if you look at computer code. If you were to examine the avatar within a game, your character that you're playing, it would have its own code running for the functions, what it does, what it's capable of, what it looks like, what special powers are or whatever, things like that. It's the same within us. If you look at the very small level at our DNA, it's our code running. Now, again, on a spiritual level, your DNA can be tinkered with before birth. 
at its root, your DNA comes from your soul, but it can be slightly altered so that you'll have a different experience, a different kind of lifetime. So variations would be, say, level of disability or ability or level of intelligence or unintelligence or beauty, perceived beauty or not so much, things like that. So those things might be chosen before birth in order to help tailor your experience as a human being when you get here. But at its root, it's all generated by the soul, your higher self, your overriding you that's projecting you into this reality and using the Earth's resources. So DNA will be different in each lifetime, but at its core, it's the same DNA running from your soul projected into this reality. So as I said with the definition of genes, parts of your DNA are taken from each parent and that's why we can look like our parents or look like our siblings or even uncles and aunts. And it's meant to be that way, otherwise we might grow a bit suspicious if we didn't look like our parents or whatever and we might see through this whole DNA business. So a part of the DNA is copied from our parents, little bits of it, so that we resemble them a bit or have certain shared characteristics. So what is DNA activation? Well, this planet is going through a vibrational shift, moving from the third to fourth density. It will have five dimensions also, and that's why people refer to it as 5D. Please see my video videos on that for further clarification. So as we ascend, as it were, to the next stage of existence, the frequency of matter within us is changing and we activate our new fourth density body, ready for the next existence, the next level of existence. And as I've said in this video, some of us have our fourth density body activated already. That's dual bodies. That's those moving from the third density to the fourth density of existence. There's dual bodies in activation. Now that's where the DNA has been activated. So you see, it's a template for a new body, an overlay on this one, but cannot be perceived by us. It's in the next stage of existence, a different frequency of matter, a higher vibration. Now just quickly, this doesn't include wanderers. Please see my video on wanderers. Those who have returned here from a higher level of existence and come here to do spiritual work and raise the vibration and be here present for this transition for the wonderful experience and catalyst that it brings. Wanderers have third density body activated only for this experience. But those who are making the graduation, wanderers have already made the graduation and returned, but those who are making the graduation for the first time often have dual bodies activated. That DNA is activated. Wanderers who have come back and return from higher densities of existence from other parts of the universe have returned and their DNA from higher stages of existence has been temporarily deactivated. The fourth, fifth or sixth density bodies have been temporary, temporarily deactivated for this third density experience. So DNA activation is activating your fourth density body. As the Earth raises in vibration, it's activating its fourth density body and entities are moving into that level of existence. Now just quickly, what are some symptoms of DNA activation? Well, please see this video on Are You a 5D Entity? That describes the characteristics of someone who is experiencing the vibrational shift their vibration is raising and they're activating their fourth density self. So things like having a spiritual awakening, being interested in spiritual matters, going about trying to raise the vibration on this planet, wanting to help others, having physical symptoms too, such as dizziness and nausea, moods swinging backwards and forwards, also allergies coming about as we sort of start to reject this third density reality and you start to experience more love and understanding and really realise the concept of oneness and service to others as well as service to self and working on the self and doing your inner work to help you ascend to the next stage of existence. So please see that video. And also, how do we activate our DNA? 
So we activate our DNA by practicing techniques to help us ascend. Please see my video on tips on ascension, how to ascend quicker if you will. That video will help with that and that's all part of the same concept, activating your DNA, activating your fourth density body, ascension, spiritual progression, it's all part of the same thing. And further on how to activate your DNA is that it's happening naturally as the earth makes that graduation during the vibrational shift, many people are experiencing a spontaneous spiritual awakening and realization as the consciousness, the level of consciousness shifts. So these are essentially upgrades happening. Your DNA, your third density DNA is switching off and your fourth density DNA is switching on. So let's look at some more information about DNA. So this is from Mike Adams at naturalnews.com. The Human Genome Project suffers an epic fail. The first draft of the Human Genome Project was published in the year 2000. Far from being a breakthrough that would end all human disease, its findings utterly shattered the mythology of genetics as the sole explanation for all inheritance and physical development. Why? Because the Human Genome Project found that humans have only about 20,000 protein coding genes, roughly the same number as a roundworm. Oh my goodness, why would that be? Why would we have roughly the same number of genes as a roundworm? That being is pretty simplistic, it's a roundworm for goodness sake, it doesn't have our level of consciousness to do any of the things that we can do. How can that be? Well the truth is that there isn't enough data storage in 20,000 genes to hold a blueprint for a human being. From a digital storage point of view, as DNA is digital in its format, a base pair is equivalent to two bits of binary data. So they're saying that DNA is of a digital nature. What was I saying about everything being one big program? It turns out this number is shockingly small. That's the data storage capacity of DNA itself. 750 megabytes is smaller than the file of a typical modern video game. It's smaller than a movie on a DVD. In fact, it's so small that a typical miniature thumb drive you might buy at Best Buy can actually store over 20 times as much data. That's merely a 16 gigabyte thumb drive. 750 megabytes of data is so small that no one can explain how it could possibly account for a human body with extraordinary complexity while somehow encompassing physical, structural, functional and behavioural inheritance as well. So where's all the data? If there's not enough storage capacity in DNA to store all the information to create us and everything about us, where's the data stored? Here's some of the functions that we can do that need coding for. You are born with innate behaviours and the ability to develop all on your own. The behavioural skills to walk, talk, focus your eyes, digest foods, eliminate waste, sweat, breathe and much more. Meanwhile, your body accomplishes billions of chemical reactions every second without you even knowing it. Somehow every cell, organ and organ system in your body knows what to do to keep you alive and functioning. Your body and its functions are unimaginably complex. Simply cataloguing the structure and function of all the cells in your body right now would take countless terabytes of data, more than a million times larger than megabytes of data. No matter how the desperate materialists try to keep us focused on human genes, it flat out isn't possible to store a full blueprint of the human form in 750 megabytes of data. So there we are, that shows just what we're capable of and all the subconscious functions that our body is capable of and the mind and everything else and there's just not enough storage capacity. So where could our blueprint, blueprints be? So we're seeing it's not just all about DNA, our DNA is the template for us, it could be just the initial template for us, the marker if you will, and then there's far more to us, but where could it be? Mike Adams goes on. Morphic resonance fields infuriate materialists. The idea of morphic resonance infuriates materialists and nearly all modern day scientists are materialists. I mentioned this before. Please see my video on does consciousness reside within the brain? 
because the presence of a non-physical field of information naturally leads to the most dangerous data of all to materialist science, the idea of consciousness. I won't go into that now and why materialists are not keen on these ideas and holding on to their old ways of thought, but do see that video I mentioned a moment ago. So you can read about Rupert Sheldrake's ideas and he's an expert in this field. And I'll take it on further too, that our DNA is like the base marker for our existence, our template, but the rest is held out there in the unified field because we are programs, sub-programs, running within a larger program of reality. I'm not saying we're existing in a big computer program, it's far more multifaceted faceted and interdimensional and infinitely intelligent than that. As I always say, the universe is one being and we're existing within it and this being is existing to learn and experience itself, a being itself, and we are part of it. And the, our programs are, are running everywhere. We are everywhere. We are all things. We just believe we're separate. Consciousness is local to one, space and time. So these are interesting concepts that the DNA is not everything. It's not everything about us. And DNA activation, although yes, it's part of ascension, it's part of our vibrational shift, it's part of the earth and us moving to the next stage of existence, our natural evolution, but it's not everything, it's part and parcel of our ascension, of our shift, vibrational shift. Now, I don't want anyone to be confusing DNA activation, the activating of the fourth density body with natural selection and evolution and Darwinian theories. That's something else. That's the third density evolution as it has been growing. And then it will go to a point where the energetic jump is made. So here's some examples of some third density evolution that we've been through. Lactose intolerance. One example of recent natural selection in humans involves the ability to tolerate the sugar lactose in milk. Yet more than 70% of European adults can quite happily drink milk. This is because they carry a regulatory change in the region of DNA that controls the expression of the gene that codes for lactose. This genetic change appears to have happened between 5,000 and 10,000 years ago, which is around the same time domestication of milk producing farm animals such as cows was established in Europe. So because of cows coming along, we had genetic changes. It's the third density thing that's happening. And the same with disease. Infectious disease, the strongest evolutionary pressure of all comes from infectious diseases. People who are able to survive infections are more likely to pass on their genes to their offspring. So, okay, there we are. That's natural selection. That's Darwinian stuff. So that's not the same thing as our energetic change that we're moving toward at the moment. So spiritual people talk about 12 strand DNA and how it's not visible at the moment. Now, the 12 strand DNA, people have brought that through in channelings and things like that, that information. Okay, but what I'll say is that the concept of invisible DNA that hasn't been activated yet is something that I agree with because our fourth density body and ones going on from that as we reach the next and highest stages of existence, they're not activated yet and we can't see them because we can't see the fourth density. We're gradually moving into it as then we'll be able to see it and perceive it but we're not there yet and that will be a gradual process and when we reincarnate into the fourth density with just our fourth density body activated then it can be perceived and then if you were to analyse the DNA of that being it would be different DNA. It would be however many strands are activated but other strands of DNA cannot be seen in this reality because they're not third density reality DNA. So when they say that more strands of DNA are being activated, they won't be. And that's why scientists can't actually find it in this third density reality because they won't. Because it's in another dimension. It's in 5D, it's in the fourth density frequency of matter. That's where those bodies will have that DNA activated, but we won't see it here. 
So then you might say, well, there was a baby born with three strand DNA and quite a lot of people, spiritual people, got excited about this. But let me just tell you about him. Forgive me for quoting the Daily Mail here. But boy, too, is the first person in the world to be born with an extra strand of DNA. A two-year-old boy has become the only person in the world to be diagnosed with an extra strand of DNA. Brave Alfie Clamp was born blind with severe disabilities which led doctors to carry out various tests. They revealed his seventh chromosome has an extra strand of material which has never been documented anywhere in the world before. Doctors are baffled at his condition which is so rare it does not have a name. So the thing is, if someone is born with an extra strand of DNA in this third density reality, unfortunately they have disabilities because it's a mutation in this third density DNA. It's not a good thing. He's a brave, wonderful little boy, but we can't all be born with this third strand DNA, as you might imagine. So in this density of existence, it's not something to be excited about because it doesn't have the best outcomes. But wait a minute, didn't they find four strand DNA in some cells? Let's have a look. This is from the BBC, quadruple helix DNA seen in human cells. Cambridge University scientists say they have seen four stranded DNA at work in human cells for the first time. The famous molecule of life which carries our genetic code is more familiar to us as a double helix, that's two stranded as I said earlier. But researchers tell the journal Nature Chemistry that the quadruple helix is also present in our cells and in ways that might possibly relate to cancer. They suggest that control of the structures could provide novel ways to fight the disease. The existence of these structures may be loaded when the cell has a certain genotype or a certain dysfunctional state. So what they're saying here is that they found four strand DNA and it might be related to negative things like cancer and that they're saying that if the cell is dysfunctional it might be in there. And what I'd say to that, that four strand DNA and the third, three strand DNA that we were talking about a, m a moment ago with the little boy is that perhaps additional DNA is trying to manifest but in this reality it's just not going to work out. In a third density reality it's not going to work out. In the next stage of existence these extra strands of DNA being activated is where it's supposed to happen but not in this reality. Now, as I said, the new DNA that is activated as we move into the next stage of existence, we can't detect it. Our scientists won't be able to detect it as it's not of this dimension, it's not of this density. We wouldn't be able to, to detect it. Now, more about the 12 stranded DNA. Now, many spiritual people will say that the junk DNA that we have is responsible for holding the extra DNA that requires activation. But again, this is third density DNA. It's what's detectable by our scientists. In the highest stage of existence, the DNA that is activated there is not detectable by us here because we can't see the fourth density or anything in it in this reality and it's not detectable by our instruments. So the junk DNA we possess is still third density reality DNA and actually it's not junk. This is from the Scientific American Hidden treasures in junk DNA. What was once known as junk DNA turns out to hold hidden treasures, says computational biologist Ewan Burney. See, there was a lot of DNA they didn't know what it was and they just labelled it junk because they didn't think it did anything. But science is moving forward and they're figuring out that it does stuff. Now, in a series of papers published, the ENCODE group has produced a stunning inventory of previously hidden switches, signals and signposts embedded like runes throughout the entire length of human DNA. The ENCODE project has revealed a landscape that is absolutely teeming with important genetic elements, a landscape that used to be dismissed as junk DNA. So the junk DNA is third density DNA. They're finding that it does actually do stuff so I really don't think this third density junk DNA holds the key to DNA activation for higher stages of existence. Our spiritual bodies that require activation through ascension and spiritual work and the raising of consciousness, it's not there in that junk DNA. That's part of the third density. 
But if we move through the densities of existence, through spiritual progression, through inner work, through wisdom, gaining wisdom and love and understanding and understanding of oneness of all things, then our DNA activates naturally. So you don't need to activate your junk DNA, it's already in use. <laughs> so to sum up, your DNA will activate naturally as you ascend. And there's plenty of information out there on ascension, all about symptoms and what it feels like and what's going on and how to ascend quicker. And I've got videos on these things too. So doing that work for your ascension, your DNA will activate naturally because then the body that belongs to you in the next stage of existence will activate naturally. And it may already be activated, you may have dual bodies, your third density and fourth density bodies, or you might move into the next stage of existence through reincarnation, straight into the fourth with your fourth density body activated, at which point your fourth density DNA is activated, your third density DNA, you don't need it anymore, you left that behind. <laughs> so don't worry too much about DNA activation, it's something that's just going to happen to you as you make your ascension. So don't forget to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to receive regular spiritual inspiration on your journey through life. Like and share also because they're raising the mass vibration together. So go now in love and peace.